<clears throat> Hi folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, as I foreshadowed in my last um, video, I uh, talked about doing a review of the Canon 400D. Um, I talked about the Yashica Minister D last time as being a very good introduction to film photography. And um, these days, if you're looking to get into digital SLR photography, there's a lot of very expensive items out there, and of course now they're going mirrorless. But um, the route that I went through to get into um, uh, digital SLR territory was, first of all, to buy a Pentax IST D or asterisk ISTD was the first uh, Pentax digital SLR that came out and I bought that it was a six megapixel camera I'll do a review on that one one day and um, a great camera I still have it and it still works fine but the problem was that um, when I um, uh, took it to the cricket one night at the Adelaide Oval some of you who are into cricket might know of the famous Adelaide Oval uh, I had a can of coke in the bottom of the uh, my bag that I was carrying with me plus the camera unfortunately the the um, coke can pierced and got coke all over my Pentax digital SLR and it took me about a good 18 months before it eventually I, I, I sent it off to get repaired because it just clammed up once it had coke infiltrated it <laughs> and um, and it took a good 18 months before I got it back it took two goes for the people to repair it properly in the end they didn't charge me for it because they stuffed it up the first time so, uh, but the reason I bought the Canon 400D, which I'm going to review today, was because uh, the ISTD was, um, I was about to go to do a wedding in Western Australia, which is a long way from here in Adelaide, uh, that we went on a four-day journey across the Nullarbor with friends whose son it was getting married, and um, to go and do that, but I didn't trust my Pentax ISTD at the time, and uh, decided to buy a new camera, the Canon 400D, which had only just come out. The Pentax was a 6 megapixel camera, and the 400D was a 10 megapixel camera. So it was a little bit of a step up in megapixels. Anyway, I bought the camera, and I had hardly even used it, and um, went over to Western Australia to photograph a wedding. Uh, below, in the writing below this post, I'll, I'll put a link to some of the photos that I took with this camera at that wedding. Um, or maybe at no, not at that wedding, but at another wedding where I used this camera. Um, I'll put a link on my blog to where you can see some photos, wedding photos taken with the Canon 400D, because I was doing wedding photography then, and I was just getting into doing a combination of shooting film and shooting digital at the same time until I was confident that digital would let me do the whole wedding. So for most of the wedding that I used this 400D with, I used the digital camera, and uh, I did. Do, do some uh, film shots with it as well. I've got someone else to take a few film shots as we went. However, so there you go. That's the background as to why I bought this camera. And there are some reasons why I think this is a really good way to get in. These are quite um, well priced on the used um, camera market these days. The Canon 400D. The 350D was the one that came out just before it. But uh, these these are quite a good price. And... Um, they very. They don't have video, of course. This was in the pre-video days. Here's the back of it. I've actually got a. Um, uh, oh, you can see, see the, uh, the screen in the back. You can see me there. That's amazing. Anyway, so I've also got a, a battery uh, holder, extra battery holder on the bottom to give you extra time because I bought that because I was doing weddings and I wanted to make sure my batteries didn't run out. So I'll show you that in a minute. But one of the reasons why I like this camera so much, and, and particularly why uh, it's good for beginners, and why it, it, it was interesting to me at the time, was that the, the ISO that you have on here, the, uh, back in the days of film, of course, it was ASA, not ISO, and the, the main speeds that you could get hold of to shoot um, film photography in those days was 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1600. And that's precisely the ISO speeds that you've got on the back of this camera here. I don't know whether you can see that or not. I don't know that you can, actually. Oh, I've got it highlighted on the 100 one there. But, uh, so basically when I was shooting film, I would be um, usually using some 
Kodak or Fuji film, which was rated at 160 ISO or ASA, and um, which is not on here, but I used to rate it at 100 a lot of the time. Sometimes I used um, uh, Fuji Riala film, which was only rated at 100 uh, ASA <coughs> or ISO, but um, the grain in that was so good that it was almost, you could, pretty hard to tell if you took some good shots on 35 millimeter Riala um, negative film, it was pretty comparable to shooting it on a medium format 6x4.5 camera. The actual clarity and the, the detail and the fineness of the shots that you got was fantastic. So, and the highest um, ISO that you could work with in colour was around about uh, 1600. I used to vary from 100 to 400 to 800 mainly, and then towards the end I was shooting mainly 400 uh, using film. So you've got that range, it's exactly the same range that I was using on this, on this, you've got the same range on the digital camera that I was using on my film cameras. So that's a good thing, for, if you're learning photography, that's not a bad place to limit yourself to, uh, um, test out your creativity and test out your versatility on how to use those speeds, because now of course they just go um, way, way, way above uh, the norm uh, with all these high speed ISOs now, you can shoot in the dark pretty much these days. But this is a good way to learn the basics of photography when you're limited to those ISO readings on this camera. Of course, you've got a nice screen on the back where you can review what you've got in it. It's got all the usual settings of the um, program, manual, aperture priority, um, uh, uh, shutter priority. And it's got all the other nice little settings here that if you want to shoot things on automatic, you can do it. You've got a green button here as well to shoot everything on green. So... It's quite a good camera, autofocus of course. This lens that's on it, this is the standard lens that's on it that came with the the um, the camera. It's an 18 to 55 zoom lens, one 3.5 to f5.6 variable aperture. Now, it was a great lens for a while, but it's not really all that reliable now. After a while, it started to come up with an error on the back and it wouldn't fire. So my solution was to get rid of that, which I don't use anymore. I sometimes still shoot, a, shoot it to see if it's still working, so it half works. So I replaced it with this one, which is the um, uh, EFS 18-55. It's got an image stabiliser, uh, similar um, uh, lens to the other one, but it's a lot better lens, and um, and I use this most of the time for, for, for just things around the house and shooting shots of the grandkids and all that sort of stuff. So... Um, this works fine. All these lenses, of course, that I'm showing you here, they work on my... I've got a Canon 600D and a Canon 700D. <coughs> and they all work fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one here doesn't have a lens hood. Um, you can probably find one, but the other one that I showed you, I managed to get a couple of lens hoods like this, and they're quite expensive, these. They're plastic uh, Canon lens hoods. They work fine on the telephoto, but if you put them on one of these wider angle things, you're going to get some vignetting at the uh, wider angle, wider wider end of the lens. So, um, what else can I tell you about this? <coughs> this extra battery thing on the bottom is really good. So, it just screws onto the bottom. You've got some uh, extra controls up the top here, so you can um, review your shots what else do you do you've got a button up here which you can actually fire when you're shooting in the vertical format this this battery holder allows you to shoot up here uh, so uh, that's pretty handy um, <coughs> the other thing about this is that this has got some special lithium batteries in here that you recharge like that but there's also an adapter that came with the adapter, <laughs> with this battery compartment, uh, that allows you to put AAA battery, uh, sorry, AA batteries in it too. I won't show you, that's in my bag over there somewhere. I don't ever use it because I just use these. The good thing for me at the time was when I got this camera that those batteries also were working in my mini, one of my mini DV cameras that I was using quite often, so, so it was interchangeable. So, uh, what else can I tell you about it? Not much. It's got a little um, pop-up flash, of course, which is always handy. 
Let's see if it can fire it off. We'll shoot it over there. That's the uh, pre-focus thing to try and focus the thing. <coughs> and of course, <coughs> excuse me, you can, the good thing about the Canon cameras is that, that this, um, this is the, the original um, flash that you could put on top of your camera, the uh, Speedlight 430EX. And um, so <coughs> this, this sort of works with through the lens flash metering on, on the camera. Just screw it on there like that. And it's a, it's a beautiful little flash. And um, it automatically sets the flash sync speed. I've got it on P for program at the moment. I look through there and it's setting a 60th of a second. I don't think you can go past a 60th of a second on this for this flash sync, I think. So that might be what it is because it's showing in the viewfinder. It's showing, um, I've got it on program. I'm just pointing the camera forward like that. It's, it's giving me a 60th of a second at f5.6. Um, and that's based on uh, what ISO have I got it set on at the moment? I've got it set on ISO 100 at the moment. Of course, the idea of um, uh, using ISO 100, which is you don't always get on the modern cameras, is that that was the equivalent of fairly good fine grain on a camera in the old days. So these flashes, these this flash works fine. I've got two of these. It works fine on my 600D and my 700D. It tilts, and it swivels like that, and um, also you've got a little um, pull-out, little pull-out bit of plastic there. That so when you are shooting, so I'm shooting someone forward, and the idea of the flash sitting up here, of course, is not to get red eye. It separates the lens, the back of the the lens, with the, with, sorry, the the person's eye eyes. Um, if, if your flash from here, on the little pop-up flash, goes straight to your eye and comes back, you'll get red eye. But if you've got this up a little bit higher, it doesn't go straight into your eye, so you avoid the red eye. But one of the ways to um, get a nice softer image is to use this um, little pop-up, or quite often I've put a rubber band around the end of the flash with a bit of, a bit of cardboard, a, a business card, or a, um, an envelope. To put around the end of it to give you a nice soft light so bouncing off the ceiling so so in here I turn that on and I will just bounce that off the ceiling whoops that's a strange photo that I've got there what did I get there let me have a look oh it's because I've got the screen in front of me so I'll do it over here I could show you all the junk that's in this room, but I won't. But anyway, I'm just going to show a few things here. So that's at 100. I'll just change it to 400, which will give me a better result, probably. And so you can see, I'll just bring that back up again. You can probably see on there, I don't know. I can't tell whether you're seeing this at all on there or not. Um, yeah, I don't know this picks it up on the phone all that well, using on the screen on the back. Screen is quite good, but and bigger than what I had on the Pentax SLR that this replaced. But um, that's done a really good job of exposing it. You can't, I don't know that you can actually see that properly on there. <laughs> so anyway, but so if you're using one of these cameras, getting one of these flashes there, they're, you can get them on the second-hand market, and they're quite good. There's all sorts of variations of this flash now that are out. But um, I think it's an excellent camera for a, a student of photography to learn with because you're not fussed with all the um, the business of trying to do video as well. You, that's just out of the question. But you can manually set the camera. You've got manual exposure and everything on it. And um, it's, it's disciplining you to... Um, Learn, learn as if you were shooting on film. Um, you've got those limitations of those ISO speeds. Uh, you've got all the settings that the um, professional uh, film SLRs had, like my Pentax MZS, which I've reviewed on this channel as well. And so you've got all those settings, but you can almost pretend that you're using a film camera by using this camera. 
so it was very seamless to move from shooting on film to shooting on digital using this camera so I'll put a link as I said below to some of the um, shots that I might have taken on a wedding using this camera so you can see what it's like 10 megapixels is fine 6 megapixels is fine it's interesting when when digital SLRs were coming in Canon had this fantastic camera but it was only um, a digital SLR with all the bells and whistles but it was only a 3 megapixel camera they were selling it for about $6,000 Australian I was thinking about it at the time but I thought no that's a lot of money and uh, then of course a few years later they changed they up to 6 megapixels then 10 and so on or 8 and then 10 and so on and so forth <coughs> so I found when I was starting out doing weddings with the Pentax 6 megapixels was fine and 10 megapixels was fine for this for weddings however you'd probably expect a lot more in today's technology that's around the place so thanks for watching um, don't forget to subscribe uh, I was replying to one of my uh, people who commented on one of my videos today that I've got so many cameras and, and um, he expressed uh, um, thanks for the fact that I'd actually shown the, the camera and how it, what it looked like and how it worked and um, so I'm thinking that I've got so many cameras in my armory of cameras here that I could probably spend a whole year um, just reviewing doing a video two videos a week of, of all the cameras I've got both SLRs and um, folding medium format cameras uh, compact point and shoots and uh, all sorts of cameras that I've got here uh, range finders and whatever so there's a whole range here I probably have about 150 cameras here and uh, I could go through a couple of them a week and then we'd have a fairly good review of, of a, a good cross-section of, of um, cameras but also I have a lot of brochures and I've got lots of um, brochures from people like Fuji on all the different ranges of films that we used to use so that might be something that I might do too get out some of those brochures and just review the films that we used to have uh, available to us as wedding photographers in particular and uh, see whether that's been catered for now on the on the digital market uh, because those films were, were fantastic the one I mentioned before Fuji Riala was was a terrific film and uh, it was very true to colors it was one of the few films that if you wanted to photograph something that was purple would actually give you a true rendition of purple so there you go I doubt that you get too many of those films these days however thanks again for watching and and uh, listening and um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, have a look at the the comment section below so, uh, below the post for some links to some other stuff on uh, or shots of that I've used on this Canon 400D so there you go that's the Canon 400D so We'll see you next time.